Hello everyone. In this video we're going to cover user defined types also known as structures within VBA. Now the best way to explain what a struct is is by actually building an example. So let's head straight on into the Visual Basic Editor. We'll use Alt and F11. And we're going to create a new module. Let's say insert module. And we're going to give it a sensible name. Let's call it M structs. Okay, we'll close down the properties window. First thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to use the syntax for a struct, which is public type. And we're going to call it, we're going to use it for a team member. Now, this structure is going to store various bits of information, various variables related to a team member. So, for example, we could have the first name, and that would be as a string. We would have the last name, that would also be as a string. And we're going to have some years of experience, which is going to be as a double. Okay, so these are three different variables uh, which are all related to a given team member. In this instance, we're going to assume it's uh, some kind of person. And each time we define a team member using the dim keyword, we can give it a different first name, a different last name, and a different years of experience. And we'll show you how to do that in a moment. What I'd also like to include in, in this team member is a role, but I'm going to use an enumeration to define the role. So let's use our MZ Tools um, code library. We'll say enum, then I'm going to press Control and F12, which is the shortcut key that I've mapped. And the scope is going to be public. The enumeration name is going to be E member roles. First item is going to be a villain. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. The last item is going to be a minion. And the last item index is going to be two. Um, if you've ever seen the, the films uh, Despicable Me, then you'll know exactly where I'm going with this. For now, I'm just going to click on OK to create that. I'm going to just move this further down. And for the second index, I'm going to say evil genius we're just gonna have an index of one okay so that's our enumeration built and then in each team member we're going to give them a role i'm going to say role as e member roles excellent so let's get into the meat of how we might actually create it and initialize the values uh, i'm going to define a subroutine to initialize the values i'm going to say public sub initialize member. Now when you pass a user-defined type into a subroutine or a function, you have to pass it by reference. Uh, Visual Basic uh, VBA will not allow you to pass it by value. So here we're going to use by ref input member as team member. Next we're going to say Optional by val in first name a string and the default value is going to be uh, just a null string. We'll do the same for the remainder of the inputs, and we're going to assume that uh, by default everyone is a minion. Okay, and very straightforward. All we're going to do is with input member dot first name. So you can see here, we're working with the input member. When we use the dot operator, we get the nice IntelliSense dropdown, which lists the various elements or variables that are contained within the input member uh, struct. And we can access them and assign values to them. So in this case, we're going to say the first name 
is going to be assigned to in first name. Last name is going to be assigned to in last name and so on and so forth. So that's our subroutine built to initialize a given uh, team member. What we're going to do now is just build a subroutine so that we can actually print the information for a team member out to the immediate window. So we use public sub print team member. And again, because we're passing the team member into a subroutine and it's a user defined type, we have to pass by reference. Now, at a very high level, what we mean by passing by reference is that within the subroutine, we can modify the actual team member rather just than just working with a copy, which is what happens when you use by val. So we're going to say in, whoops, team member as team member. Okay. And let's say we've got a local role, a string, and we're going to use a select case to set the local role value to a, a sensible string rather than just having it as an enumerated type, which would have a value of 0, 1, or 2, which is a long data type. Uh, so that when we print it out to the immediate window, it actually makes sense. It looks sensible and we can read what it is. So we'll use select case in team member dot role. And again, if we're using uh, MZ tools, we can use the uh, select case tool for enumeration. So if we just click on this at the top here select case assistant we can see it's immediately listed all of our elements we don't want the first and the last and this is what it will build for us so we'll click on ok in case else uh, we just want in that case local role let's say it's undefined and in the case of a villain we'll just say local role equals villain and we'll just complete the rest of them okay so that's our local role set up now we're going to use um, debug print statements to print out each of the values in the various elements of our team member in the various uh, member variables so we'll just write the first of these debug.print first name and again we use the dot operator dot first name and we'll just continue with the rest of them now okay so that's our debug print statement set up to print out uh, each of the elements from the input team member and you can see again we can access these elements from the outside just in the same way as when you initialize it you can modify the elements from outside of the team member um, and just to finish off let's put in a subroutine just to run through and actually uh, execute these various subroutines, set up our team member, and print out the team member information. So for this, we'll use private sub test team member. And first of all, we're going to define a team member using the dim my team member as a team member then we're going to call initialize the team member we're going to input my team member 
we're going to call him Gru. We're going to say that his surname is Evil. He's got 10 years of experience and he is a villain. Then we're going to use call print team member and we're going to say my team member. As a second example, let's say call initialize member. Uh, let's create a new team member here. Let's call it dim my minion as team member. So let's um, line these up nicely. It's always a good good practice. Makes it easier to read. And we're going to initialize my minion. We're going to call him Siren Bob. He's only got three years of experience and he's a minion. And then we're going to once again print team member my minion. So we've got two team members that we're going to create here. Our first team member is our villain Gru, and our second team member is a minion, and it's going to be Siren Bob. Let's compile our code, and then let's um, let's actually click on the play button. Let's run this and see what happens. See what we can see in the immediate window. So we click on play, open up the immediate window, and we can see we've got the various information being printed out as our first. Um, team member is Gru, he's got 10 years of experience and he's a villain. Our second team member is Siren Bob, he's got 3 years of experience and he is a minion. Let's clear out the immediate window, close that down. And as a final kind of thing just before we go, let's actually uh, put in a few breakpoints and execute this code so that we can take a look at what happens in between actually initializing and um, setting the values for this uh, team member. Let's uh, put a breakpoint here and a breakpoint here. And then let's go back into our test team member and click on the play button. We can see it if we hover around here, we should be able to add a watch to this. Um, and we can see the input team member at the moment um let's see what let's see what we've got we've got the various um elements of the team member structure we've got a first name and a last name both of these are just an empty string we've got a role which is set to a villain and a years of experience which is set to zero so in terms of the role being a villain you can see that the uh, the first element of the member roles is a villain which is zero and that's why we are set to a villain. It's it's the default for an enumeration. Years of experience, they default to zero. Everything else goes to a empty string. Run that to the next breakpoint. And we can see that now we've got Gru. Uh, his surname is Evil. And he's a villain with 10 years of experience. Okay, I'm going to take off those breakpoints run the code through with a five and then close down the watch window so you can see in this video we've shown you how to uh, create a user-defined type a structure a struct as it's commonly called the struct can contain various elements which are variables that can hold information we can initialize it and set the values from outside of the uh, struct and we can obtain the values also from outside um, in the kind of object orientated programming uh, way of thinking each of the uh, member data for this type are public and whenever we pass a struct into a subroutine we have to pass it by reference which means a subroutine itself can modify the live the actual uh, struct that you pass in and it doesn't work with a copy. Okay, that's all I want to cover in this video um, and we'll see you next time.